Welcome back to We're Open. Today's guest was featured in Free Realms commercials and got paid for designing items. Let's hear their story. Hey, Firehawk. Thanks so much for joining us. Who were you in Free Realms? I was Firehawk 894 or Lil Firehawk or Pyrohawk. I had three characters. 894 was my lunch number in high school. Basically, we would put money into an account and when we got to the checkout, they would just ask for our number. You'll always remember that number. I would say you were most known for your dragon sculpture. How did that come about? You know, I don't remember exactly what made me want to build a dragon. It's definitely based loosely on Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. That was night after night of building. You built it in the early days of building blocks. Were there limited options at the time? You couldn't actually angle them the way that I had them angled. I would take one of the flat plane type blocks and apply it to one block and then you could put another block based into the previous block. Smart workaround. So SOE used your dragon in Free Realms commercials? When they featured that in a TV spot, they didn't and tell me about it. It was just as much a surprise to me as anyone else. I think they tagged me in like an announcement. Either that or one of the referees in game told me about it. I remember being at a friend's house and the commercial came on while we were watching something and I was like, I made that. What an accomplishment. And you designed items for in game? Yeah, that was Player Studio. SOE did this program where players could go in and make 3D models and textures for them. You could send them in for review and if they decided they liked it, they could approve it and put it into the station cash market. The laptop made it in. I also made a golf club club for the brawler job. And there was a t-shirt that I called the hang time t-shirt. I also had another t-shirt design that just said, sorry, I'm AFK. And the idea was that you could wear it when you weren't at the keyboard so that if someone teleported to you, they'd know you weren't there. But they declined that one. They couldn't have items with text on them because they'd have to translate for other languages. I definitely would have worn that, but I see where they're coming from. What was it like to see your items in game? Surreal, to be sure. They do give you one free one if you make it in. And they would give you, I think it was like a 20% of profits that the item made. They would send you a check. I think it was bi-monthly. So I made probably around $300 or $400 off of those items. That was my first form of income ever. SOE really thought that through. They get to promote player studio while getting the community involved. I think the layoffs were also beginning to happen around the same time anyway. So there weren't as many people on the art team to make new items. It was a good idea on their end. How did you find out about this and what was the process of designing items? It was Zudira Kindle River. I think she told me in game about it. So I had to learn Blender, which was a very complicated program, but was at least free. I never learned how to get a rendered image of them. I would just take a screenshot of what I could see in the program itself. And they had you format the image in a certain way that you could see the UV layout, the texture, and the object itself with the texture applied. Sounds like a lot of work. You also had relationships with the staff. So I was a part of the Free Realms Insider forums for a while, and I kind of got a name for myself because I would post drawings that I'd make. I drew a couple of the referees based on things that we would talk about in game. Eventually I joined the staff and I did a lot of the same things that Nemo did. One of my responsibilities was to go in game when the deals would change to post on the banner at the top of the Free Realms Insider website. Those deals would change at midnight Pacific, which for us on the East Coast is 3 a.m. I would be up late anyway and that's when I would go into the quest to earn money to build that dragon. I believe I was the newest member of staff still when Free Realms at its sunset. Might as well while you waited for the time to change. Do you still talk to any players? Nemo and I still talk. I've conversated with Diane Raindrop. Small world, we have them both on. What have you been up to since Free Realms? Not really a whole lot. I haven't been able to commit to another MMO. I do have a YouTube, Crofe. That is the username that I use these days. It's an anagram of Pyrohawk, that third character I mentioned earlier. I don't post there very often. I like to make up designs for Pokemon that don't exist. I've done a few cosplays. I dressed up as Tokoyami from My Hero Academia and a shy guy from Mario. Those were both for a local convention. I didn't think I'd like it much because I'm very introverted. I've always been. But once you're actually there, it puts you in a completely different mindset. It's really exciting. That must have been a fun experience. What do you think of FRS? You know, I haven't followed it very closely, but I am excited. It's pretty crazy to think that we might be able to go back into that world and explore it once again. We'll have to see what happens. Before we go, do you have a favorite memory of Free Realms? There was an area behind the big tree in Sanctuary where it's just kind of like a multi-level cave system with a pool of water at the bottom. Now, I remember the music there being so nice. I loved going there and just hanging out, like just standing in that one spot while I chatted with people. You could tell a lot of love went into the art direction of that game. It's a beautiful area. Thanks so much for joining us. We can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you for having me. Honestly, with the interviews you've had so far, it was an honor to even be on your radar. I'd like to thank Firehawk so much for joining us. Subscribe to find out who our next guest is.